I could get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of brokerage firm owners and, and economists and people that go on CNBC or Fox Business on this show all day, but most of them are wrong about 80% of the time because I do watch those shows, but it's just like amateurish compared to what people could be hearing. Now, Peter Schiff goes on a lot of those shows, and when he does, he's usually the odd man out. Uh, but when I have somebody on like a Harry Dent or a Peter Schiff or a Max Kaiser, you know, they're right like 80 to 90% of the time or more. And the media makes a huge deal of it when they're wrong, you know, 5, 10% of the time on average, maybe every once in a while, 10% wrong. Because I've really been following this. I read the financial papers. I, I track what's happening. Mainstream media doesn't want to tell you the truth in my experience. And it's rewarded a fantasy land for so long that a lot of people, I think, are drinking their own Kool-Aid and really believe the Keynesian economics they push. I'm not saying Austrian economics is perfect. No model is, but it's, it makes a lot more sense from what I've seen historically uh, than, than, than what they're shoveling at us. So I got to say, one of the only things Schiff was quasi, I guess you could say wrong about, was he kept saying gold's going to go up, gold's going to go up probably. And it has now. But he was right about what was going to happen, how things would unfold, uh, what he thought they did with rates, a small cut, and then maybe try to go back. It, it's all happening. So I don't know who's more accurate, Dent or Schiff, but it doesn't matter because they're more generally accurate in, in a whole other universe than the other people. I mean, like a Ron Paul is more accurate by light years than the competition. So we're going to be talking to him about all these huge developments, where he sees the economy going now. Uh, really, how bad is it? Because they've been saying everything's fine for years when it's been going in the crapper. And the water's rising. We're like one of the highest islands, but still, it's rising. Some countries are underwater. What does he think's coming next? We're going to talk to Peter Schiff here in just a moment from Europac.com. No stranger to this show or pretty much anybody out there, so there's no need to go over his bio for you, but he has billions under management. His father is a very famous political prisoner who died last year. Uh, very, very sad. Now, Peter Schiff. One of the most accurate people in my 20 years on air. I mean, I remember in the last 15 years or so seeing him on CNBC and Fox Business and stuff, but very accurate, predicted a lot of things, went contrarian to the system, and he's been saying, hey, this is going to melt down, this isn't going to work, the QE, you know, he, he predicted that they would just do a small increase, he predicted when they would do it. He's made a lot of accurate predictions. He doesn't want to toot his horn, but I think it's important if he goes over those for new listeners because so many new TV stations and radio stations are picking us up that may not watch the financial shows. And then what he predicted in the collapse now beginning to come true and how bad he really thinks it is versus what they're saying. I have a lot of questions. I want to move quick with him. Europac.com. Peter, thank you for coming on with us. Thanks, Alex. Where do you want to start? I mean, there's just so much happening. Yeah, you know, all the things that I've been talking about, both on your program and, you know, my own uh, internet program, a Peter Schiff show, or whenever they will occasionally invite me on, uh, you know, conventional uh, television, you know, all this stuff is now starting to, to happen. It's starting to unfold. The mainstream still doesn't understand, right? They, they still think, oh, maybe the Fed made a mistake. Maybe they shouldn't have raised rates. That wasn't the mistake. The mistake was lowering them to zero in the first place. The minute they did that, they, they sealed our fate. It didn't matter when they raised rates. The minute they would do it, everything was going to fall apart because it was a phony recovery. It was a bubble. And the fact that they waited so long means that the bubble is that much bigger, which means it's that much more problematic when it pops. I think what we're staring at right now, unless the Fed quickly backtracks and cuts rates and does QE4, which I think they're going to do, they may even go negative. But I think we're going to have a worse financial crisis than the one we had in 2008. But if the Fed does what I think it's going to do to try to prevent that crisis, then they're actually going to usher in something much worse in the form of a dollar crisis, which is going to be much worse than just a general financial crisis. They could finally kill the dollar because the conventional wisdom is that we're the worst, we're the best house in a bad neighborhood. But at the same time, it's got to give someday and it just can't go on forever. And it appears that's beginning to crack with all the big banks and the Royal Bank of Scotland and Soros saying, panic, it's over, everything's going to collapse. It almost <laughs> makes me then ask, what do they think they're doing? Well, they have no idea. But, you know, the only reason that the dollar has risen these past several years, although it's now falling so far in 2016, but the reason it rose is because everybody was convinced that what the Fed did actually worked. 
that we had a real recovery and that the Fed was going to be able to raise rates. I knew all along that that wasn't true. And I actually thought the Federal Reserve was smart enough not to raise rates. But they proved me wrong on that because they were dumb enough to think that they can get away with a quarter point hike. I knew that wouldn't be the case. And now they've pricked their own bubble and the air is coming out of it. And, you know, that's why you talk about gold. The only reason gold was falling was because people believed in this myth. Now that we're you know, looking beneath, behind the curtain, gold is off to its best annual start in the history of gold. Right? Gold is now at about $1,230 an ounce, a little bit more. It was at $1,050 the day after the Fed raised rates. And in fact, just yesterday, one of the biggest gold bears, this analyst over at ABN AMRO, uh, she had a price target for gold in 2016 of 900 she just changed it yesterday from 900 to 1300. Now that's a pretty big about face for sure. a major bank. And the reason she said that she did this is her case for lower gold prices was based on the Fed raising rates. She now believes that the Fed's not going to raise rates at all in 2016, and so now she thinks gold's sure, going to 1300. Sure. What do you say to people like Dent, who's been you know really accurate on a lot of fronts, saying, look. It's going to end up going down because it's not even really a commodity. It's it's basically worthless. I disagree with him <laughs> on, on some of those fronts, even though I know he's really smart, because it, it is a commodity. It is industrially used. It, it, it's seen culturally also as a hedge against inflation or emergency. Big governments, uh, large populations, China, India, Mexico are buying gold it. Is anything, anything but worthless. But forgetting about its role as a commodity, and it has a unique role, and it's been valued for its properties for thousands of years, but think about the environment we're in. Not only do we have 0% interest rates, but we have negative interest rates, and we have governments threatening to outlaw cash. They want to do away with the $100 bill or the 500 That's euro That's the next place or, I was going. I mean, this will be all we have as a yeah. true barter currency. It'll force us back to a real currency. That was my next question. Right. I've never seen a push by the European Central Bank and by Larry Summers and by the big five banks to get rid of cash, to make us go all digital. What is that really about, Mr. Schiff? Well, it's, it's all about control. It's a, about a loss of financial privacy. It's about a loss of freedom. And it's about being able to debase the money. See, the problem with negative interest rates right now is, well, I'll just take my money out of the bank and put it in my mattress and I avoid the negative rate. Well, if they make that impossible, if it's, hey, either you put it in the bank or you don't have it, then it's stuck there. And then you can lose money with negative rates. And, and it's also about them being able to do bail-ins or tax your money uh, or, 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 or basically nationalize it, which they've done in Europe over and over again. I mean, the big kahuna of tyranny we've always known is getting rid of cash. And right. boy, they're sure and pushing it. And what about the underground economy? The, the underground economy is not going to go away if they take away cash. They're just going to have to find an alternative to cash. And what's the oldest alternative available? Gold. That's gold and point. silver. I mean, what are people going to use? People are going to go back to real money, traditional money. This experiment in fiat money is blowing up all around us. And it's ironic that probably just before the greatest bull market in the history of gold, you had so much negativity. In fact, just about all the hedge funds at the end of last year were short gold. I mean, it was the it was the first time in history that hedge funds were net short gold. Look at what these geniuses did. They were all short gold out below eleven hundred, and look where it is now. I mean, everything they bought. So has how gone bad down, did that hurt? And them? the one thing they shorted went up. Well, who knows? I mean, I mean, hedge funds are probably going to blow up. Look at the banks. They own these financials. The banks have been cut in half. A lot of these favorite high flying tech tech stocks have been demolished. Everything they were buying is plunging. And the one thing they were shorting is what's going up. Gold is the number wow, one Wow, I didn't think of that because, as you know, you talked about this a decade ago. Ron Paul's talked about it. Uh, so many folks have talked about the manipulation of the gold and silver markets. It's now come out they've been doing that. And so— oh, yeah, and look— you look at Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is desperately trying to encourage everybody to short gold. They've been coming out several times. Not only are they telling people to sell gold, they're telling them to short it. They're saying it's going to How 1100. How long can they suppress it? How long can they suppress it? Well, look, obviously not long. This whole fantasy is evaporating. It's falling apart before their eyes. They're desperate to try to do something. They want to talk the price down. But, you know, the truth is out. Sure. They raised interest rates now by a tiny little bit. And what do we have? The worst start 
in, in history, history of the of stock the, market. Of the right. So well, let me just add this. Started. I haven't sold one piece of gold or silver that I've bought in 25 years, and my gut tells me stuff I bought at 300, I kept it when it went to 2000. It goes down to 1000. I don't care. This whole paper fraud is garbage. The enemies of freedom lie about it constantly, and so I know it's there as an emergency backup. And it just comes to, and, and my gut tells me I did the right thing. But then I talk to yeah. people like 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 Dent. To be fair, he didn't say it was worthless. He just he just said you know it's overvalued. He's right on so many things. Uh, he's then wrong I just on get, that though. Well, he's well, wrong on that because he somehow believes that it's all going to fall apart. The U.S. is going to collapse, and the dollar is somehow going to gain value in that environment. That makes no sense. That's like telling me that a corporation is about to go bankrupt but I should buy shares in the company because the stock price is going to go up. Well, he no, says no. it's 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 the best house in a bad neighborhood, and so far no, that's not. been happening. It's not the best house. It's actually the worst house. The only reason that people perceive it to be good is because it's been a self-fulfilling prophecy, and people have believed all Confidence the hype. Game. But we. But well, you we know the guy that brought the down illusion. Madoff. The guy that brought down Madoff says there's three <laughs> bigger scams right now that he's yeah. investigating. Yeah, well, you know, but we pierce the illusion. We pretended that we can raise interest rates. I said many times on your show, the Fed needed to talk about raising interest rates to pretend that they could do it, but not actually do it and prove that they couldn't. Well, we just raised interest rates a quarter point and all hell is breaking loose. If you look at the banking sector, it hasn't been this stressed since the before right, that's the my next question you're getting into all the technicals you did call it just exactly the whole time with qe mm -hmm. and what would happen tell us next and i'm not disagreeing with you but somebody like dent says the u.s is great china is bad china's going to hell in a handbasket you a lot of times say china's better than the u.s china's set to ban all foreign media from publishing online that's the independent uh china obviously has seen a third of its wealth go away what do you see really going where are the best places to be? Where are the worst places? And what's the next shoe to drop? Yeah, look, well, what does China produce? They produce all sorts of products that everybody in the world wants to consume. We have a huge trade deficit with China. It's not the other way around. All we produce is treasury bonds. We go into debt. We borrow money to buy the things that the Chinese economy is productive enough to create. So we're the country that's in a lot more trouble, not China. They're the ones that have been loaning us money. They're the ones who have been you know, allowing us to have all the stuff that they produce. So I, I think that people who are worried about China are missing the bigger picture. China has problems, but our problems are much larger. Sure, he comparison. thought China would be the detonator, but isn't the argument really the detonator? Uh, and I think he says this too, and you say this, is, is the, the QE unlimited? Oh, yeah. And, you know, a lot of these hedge funds that were shorting gold or different hedge funds now are shorting the Chinese uh, currency, the, the, the yuan, because they think it's going to collapse. But it's actually the dollar that's going to collapse, not the yuan. Good God. Because as it, it's been the idea that we can raise interest rates that has supported the dollar. Sure. This is the biggest bubble the Federal Reserve has ever inflated. The U.S. economy is in worse shape than it's ever been. We doubled the national debt uh, since the financial and crisis. You're not being negative. These are facts. So let me ask you this. Just, oh. just as a father... You know, as a father talking to a father, okay? What do you really think is going to happen? I know you not a prediction, but obviously we have another Great Depression. It, 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 people are going to kill each other. I mean, we're not as moral as we were. People were hardworking. They knew how to plant a garden. They And still 7 million people, major university studies show, died in association of malnutrition or from illnesses from malnutrition. Basically, 7 million people died in a famine in the U.S. over that 10 years. Uh, it was it was you know quietly dealt with. It was very very sad. Europe tens of millions. What is going to happen if we have a real real depression here with this spoiled rotten well, population? I mean, I am actually scared. Well, this could be a lot worse because during the depression in America, we were still a relatively free, prosperous economy. We had lots of individual rights. Government was tiny. We had sound money. We were on the gold standard. Uh, and we had the benefit of falling prices. Everybody wants to talk about how bad deflation is. Look, deflation is great. You're unemployed and the cost of food is going down and your rent is going down and your utility bills are going down. That's all good news, right? Americans aren't going to be that fortunate this time because we're going to see massive increases no, in it's, consumer it's, prices. It's hell on because, earth. I mean, look, the Pentagon says it. The Ministry of Defense and the reports that we've covered say it, that when there's a financial meltdown, they say between 2016 and 2020, this was put out in 2007, London Guardian, go look it up, folks. They say it could be road warrior level is one of the quotes in the, in the Pentagon report. I mean, I don't know if it's going to get that bad, but the societal issue of all these spoiled, rotten brats that think everything is entitled to them under socialism and a crazy like Bernie Sanders... I mean, is this not the perfect storm, sir? What do you oh, think? Oh, yeah, this is this is the reason that the founding fathers 
uh, detested democracy so much. They wanted to protect us uh, from things like Bernie Sanders. But look, I don't know how bad it's going to get, but I don't want to find out, you know, uh, it, holding dollars. I don't want to have my, my life savings, my retirement accounts in a currency uh, that can be almost completely worthless in a worst case scenario. Even in a best case scenario, the dollar is going to lose the majority of its purchasing power. There's no way out of this. Peter, this stay is there. I'm going to come back with one more segment and, and one more if you can. You probably got to go, but I want to really drill into this best case scenario, worst case scenario, and what you're doing. I, I mean, seriously, folks, I'm not exaggerating when I say I'm thinking about getting a farmhouse with an armored 20 foot wall. You know, and I mean, seriously, I mean, this is just out of control. If you study this and what the real experts say versus the media, this is dangerous. We'll be back. You notice folks aren't calling Peter Schiff, myself, Ron Paul, fear mongers anymore. I mean, you can't just print unlimited money and give it to the elites forever and not have it cause big problems. So in the six minutes we have, the next five minutes that Mr. Schiff's with us, I'm going to try to shut up here uh, and let him break down where he thinks this is going, how bad it's going to get, what he's doing to protect himself, and what some of the other big hot spots are. And then the next segment, I want to briefly ask him about the campaigns, uh, about the Pope weighing in on politics, where he sees all that going as well. But uh, getting back to the head of Euro-specific capital, and I'll also give folks uh, that website and put that up on screen. Peter, continue where we left off. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how often history repeats, you know, even recent history, because the last financial crisis happened in the final year of Bush's second term. And the same thing is about to happen again is the final year of Obama's second term. And the bubble that the central banks have created during the Obama administration is much bigger than the one that we inflated during the Bush administration. And if you remember, in early 2008, in February 2008, all the experts were unanimous. Everything was great. The US economy was in good shape. Nothing to worry about. And then a few months later, we had the financial crisis and, you know, all hell broke loose. And now the same thing is happening again because we didn't let the free market solve the problems that the Federal Reserve created. We now have exacerbated all those problems. We now have an even bigger economic crisis around the corner. And the same experts who were oblivious before are still telling us that everything is fine. There's nothing to worry about. In fact, the Fed was so convinced we were in such great shape that they actually raised interest rates in December and everybody applauded. Everybody said, oh, this is fantastic. This proves that the, the crisis is over. Well, we're about to launch this crisis into a whole new gear. What you saw in 2008 was a Sunday school picnic compared to what's coming up right now. And I think what we're gonna have this time again is a currency crisis because I don't think they're gonna let it get to a repeat of 2008 in this election year. I think they're getting ready to pull out the stops with 0%, maybe negative rates, QE4. Who knows what these guys are gonna do, but it's gonna destroy the value of the dollar. Hopefully, hopefully it won't be a worst case scenario, which is hyperinflation, where the currency is completely worthless. Hopefully they figure out their mistakes before we go that far down the line. But don't wait. You know, don't wait to find out how much dollar value the dollar loses. You need to get rid of your dollars now. That's what we're doing with our clients. We're still buying lots of gold. Gold stocks are extremely cheap. If people really want to try to hit the home run here, you know, there's a lot of 10 baggers, 20 baggers in the gold mining space, even though a lot of these stocks are up 50, 100, 150 percent since mid-January. Since mid-January, you've got some stocks that have tripled, but there's still so much more to go. A lot of these stocks are still down 70, 80 percent from where they were a few years ago. But I think the momentum is there in these stocks, also in physical gold. And the, the markets I like the best, New Zealand, Singapore, Switzerland, there's a lot of value there because the dollar is still overpriced because people haven't figured out what's around the corner yet. So there's still plenty of time sure. for people to protect themselves and you know work with me at Europe Pacific Capital to get these diversified foreign portfolios or work with me at Shift Gold to get physical gold uh, you know, before it blows through 1300, because once it goes through there, you know, there's not that much resistance until we get back near the old highs of around 1900. Well, Peter, expanding on that, when I have Den on, he says, hey, all the gold in the world goes in an Olympic swimming pool. That's not what you're going to base a currency on. Well, that sounds like it's what you do base it on because it's scarce. <laughs> exactly. plus, plus it's industrial. Plus, yeah. once it, the market's been so bad for f four years or whatever, everybody's getting out of gold at the production yeah. level. That means then you can't ramp production back up for a long time. Once gold goes back up, to me, it seems like the biggest potential home run there is or grand slam. Oh, look, absolutely. You better get your piece of that swimming pool while you can, because the fact that it's scarce is one of the reasons it's so valuable. And yes, can we base the world's monetary system on gold 
at $1,230 an ounce. No, we can't. But at $10,000 an ounce, at $20,000 an ounce, obviously there's a price that's going to that's work. That's right, stay there. And, and, and Davos talks about having a global SDR partially gold-backed. We'll be right back in 70 seconds with Peter Schiff. And then we've got so much more coming up, folks. So much more on the campaign trail. South Carolina, Europac.com is his website. He's not a sponsor, but I do have him on because he knows what he's talking about when it comes to economics and things. And so that's why I do endorse a lot of Peter Schiff's ideas. But I'm just here to get people thinking for themselves and having a wide variety of different perspectives so you can make your own decisions. I just know that I've studied history and never before have humans been more unself-sufficient, more dependent, more spoiled rotten in the West. There are great people in Europe, great people in America, great people in Japan, great people in Australia, New Zealand, Canada. But let's just get down to brass tacks. I don't know how to take care of myself compared to my dad. And I'm like a caveman compared to the average yuppie. I mean, you hear about yuppies move out in the country and they see their neighbor hauling a deer up to gut it. And they call the police on them. I see that article every you know, day in the news. And the cops show up and act like it's wrong in many areas. You know, and it's just like, it's body snatchers or something. What are they going to do during this meltdown? And how bad is it going to get? We've only got about four minutes left. I wanted to just... Get any more time frame info from you, Peter, and then also ask, what do you think about the campaign so far? What do you think about Scalia? I, I didn't say they murdered him. I said there should be an autopsy. The cops have come out and said that, too. One of the deputies came on and said they've never done this before. It's really weird. Uh, other little tidbits about what's happening. Uh, Bernie Sanders, what a nightmare. Well, obviously, look, there should be an autopsy. But, you know, 79-year-old guy, uh, overweight, probably not in the best shape. I mean, the fact that he died of natural causes is, you know, obviously uh, not something that's outside the realm of possibility. But look, they should still do an autopsy anyway, uh, just uh, just to clear away any potential doubts. But, you know, Bernie Sanders, that is very scary. I mean, if you, you look at the support that he enjoys, uh, particularly with younger people in this country, and that is a very scary thought. Because unfortunately, this is a democracy, which means mobocracy, which means majority rules. And if the majority are a bunch of socialists, we're in trouble. Look, the Nazi party, again, not that I'm going to compare. No, but they were uh, national Sanders. socialists and Hitler yeah. was going to give them something for free. What about but Sanders, they, it turns out, <clears throat> never had a paying job till 40 yeah. and bragged yeah. that he was a bum. The guy oh, is yeah, a bum. Is, yeah, my point is, but, but we elected, Germany elected the Nazis. But the point is, this is the danger of putting up things up to a vote. When you have American school system, we indoctrinate kids. They learn absolutely nothing. They're brainwashed until they're 22 years old, and they come out Bernie Sanders voters. They know nothing about economics. They know nothing about the history of this country. They know nothing about our founding principles or what made this country great. They're idiots. They just know a bunch of nonsense, and they want something for nothing, and they believe the lies told by Sanders because the lies told by the, the Democrats and Republicans up until now have blown up in their faces. And especially when you have Barack Obama giving a State of the Union address, talking about how great everything is and how many jobs he's created, and you've got all these people living he in their He said the U.S. Basement. has <laughs> never been better financially. <laughs> No, and people are frustrated because at least Bill Pitt Clinton said, I feel your pain. Barack Obama is like, hey, there's no pain to feel. I've done a great job. And this is just, you know, creating a great uh, environment for Bernie Sanders to tap into that resentment, that frustration, and, of course, the envy. Who do you think wins in a matchup? I mean, because now even Salon's thrown in the towel saying Hillary can't win. Who's more dangerous, Bernie or Hillary A? And then B, uh, I, I think Trump will dominate either one of those clowns in the general election. You know, Trump is an unknown quantity because, you know, Trump is a showman, right? And he may be saying certain things because he knows that that's what's going to get the votes. I mean, Trump, I, I probably, Trump has better judgment and is, you know, and probably more intelligent to actually do the right thing. A lot of the things that he's saying to get elected, hopefully those aren't going to be the things that he does if he is elected. He might just be, you know, as much as he says, I'm not a politician, he's playing politics because he knows what works. And by holding himself up out not to be a politician, right, to say, I'm not the same old thing, I'm something different. This, there's a lot of politics there because he's sure. He's I'm not, not usually lesser anything. two evils, but we know he's better than Hillary and Bernie. Well, no question about it. But the question is, what will he do? I mean, if he obviously tries to put all these tariffs on and he doesn't really want to cut Social Security, he wants to replace Obamacare with some other kind of government socialized program. If he wants to do a lot of this stuff, then it's going to be a disaster. But hopefully he's smart enough not to actually do that. Once he gets elected, he can do what's right. He all right, Peter Schiff, we're out of time. Popular. Thank you so much, Peter.